an impressive upgrade for basic cable. This four and a half hour limited series event was a huge ratings win for the Sci-Fi Channel when it was first broadcast in December of 2000. The three-part show adapts all of the politics, betrayal, lust, greed, and world-saving conflict of Frank Herbert's classic novel for a new generation, all written and directed by John Harrison for the low price of $20 million. The large cast is led by Alec Newman, who you may recognize from any of his four dozen television credits, but to me and most audiences in 2000, he was an unknown. And while the young Scotsman is not the most charismatic version of Paul Atreides, I definitely warmed up to his style by the end of the lengthy experience. His oft-repeated mantra, fear is the mind killer, serves as meditation before he undertakes another dangerous task or test. I hold the conch bar at your throat, young Atreides. Keep your hand in the box and live. Remove it and die. His co-stars include plenty of other talented, if lesser-known, TV actors doing excellent work, including Saskia Reeves, James Watson, P.H. Moriarty, Gina Cardinal Giannini, Julie Cox, and Barbara Katova who gives a compelling and capable performance as the beautiful Fremen warrior Chani. Last, and unfortunately in terms of screen time also least, is Academy Award winner William Hurt, who actually receives top billing on the project despite being absent from the second and third episodes. While purists may claim he's not as formidable as Herbert originally wrote him, I found Hurt's more understated and compassionate performance really powerful. He is a sympathetic leader more interested in peace than power. He stoically prepares Paul by admitting, this is my legacy to you, son, the greatest wealth in the universe and the never-ending struggle to defend it. Obviously, the biggest advantage this version has over Lynch's is the runtime. Namely, Harrison's adaptation is allowed to deliver exposition more organically with a slow drip approach. And since the narration is kept to a bare minimum, we mostly learn things when the characters do, so it doesn't feel like we're cramming for a pop quiz. A great example of this is when Newman quickly and calmly prevents a gesture of thanks, tribe leader Stilgar spitting at the Duke, from being misinterpreted as hostile or disrespectful. As the audience is just as naive as Hurt, we're momentarily taken aback by this action too, before the mini twist is revealed. Whereas in Lynch's version, there would have been a wall of text or something 40 minutes earlier explicitly preparing us for this scenario in hopes we'd remember its meaning and context later. Similarly, on the subject of length, I'm glad the entire middle act of this story hasn't been reduced to a single two-minute montage. But if I'm being honest, this is where the story does drag the most, fascinating as all the interpersonal drama may be. Technically, however, Frank Herbert's Dune falls badly short of its potential. The over-reliance on virtual backgrounds in nearly every scene rarely looks convincing. Those early CGI effects look dodgy as hell. I mean, tell me these establishing shots of Arrakis don't look like a screenshot from StarCraft or something. And the color grading? Woof. Everything is filmed like a garish music video from the 80s, seemingly shot via night vision for some reason. The saturation is so aggressive that the trademark blue eyes of the Fremen people look downright neon at times. But given this was all done on a cable TV budget 25 years ago, the scope of the production and story is definitely commendable. And apparently the members of the Television Academy agreed, as the series actually won an Emmy for outstanding special visual effects and cinematography. The 2000s were a different time, what can I say? In the spice, we can always get more. Now prepare for evac, that's an order. A well-paced adventure that delivers an entertaining mix of political intrigue, action, world building, and sex appeal. This is a fun experience all fans of the book ought to watch. Despite its technical shortcomings, Frank Herbert's Dune is an ambitious TV show worth exploring. I thought it was a good adaptation, and one that's remarkably more coherent than its predecessor. That does it for this movie night review, but if you'd like to watch more content, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit the Jogwheel YouTube channel to see full episodes of this show alongside all my other videos. My name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching, and have a good movie night.